for some reason, I think we've lost a lot of emphasis on, on art education and the importance of art. Um, I remember in, in, in the 70s and 80s, or in the years when I was in college in the 70s, how, how important art was to people. It, it really was quite, and, you know, and being able to have some sensitivity in looking at art and it was really, you know, really part of being an educated person. And I, I'm amazed at how many professional people I know now who just think that art is just not something for them at all. And that's really sad. Yeah. It's just really sad. So we have to be, you know, more articulate spokesmen for the arts. Go As ahead, a, to the camera. <laughs> why, why is art important, Tara? <laughs> well, art is important for First of all, for our own self-knowledge. I mean, because our, you know, the paintings that we love and the things become mirrors of, of you know, who we are as well. And they become like signposts to our own journeys through life. Mm. I mean, if we look at life as a, as a journey that encompasses awakening both to ourselves and to you know, a greater awareness of what we're connected to, uh, then, you know, art can really be an important part of that because it's, uh, again, it's, from going back to our beginning, it's this very holistic uh, uh, type of knowledge. It encompasses everything. And when we, put, when we put all that together, you know, the instinctive, the emotional, and then the analytical, when we put that together in some relationship, then I think the possibilities of what we understand from art are really huge. We, we've certainly heard the answer to this, but just for the sake of documentation, you want to talk a little bit about your class that you developed learning to see? What are your goals there? What's the what's Well, the yeah, learning, the learning to see is based on this whole concept of, of integration, and, it, and it's, uh, it is a class of, about self-knowledge, because when, as soon as the student starts to draw, it starts to access a certain attention within them that allows them to draw and to design things and become more visual. They really, they really see them, start seeing themselves in a different way and they really ex experience themselves. Their whole sense of I am becomes a little bit different. And that's really exciting to see. Plus, uh, you know, learning to see color. Most students come in assuming that they see color and I'm amazed at, actually, uh, at two things. First of all, how, how little color some students are actually aware of. And then secondly, how, they can learn, how fast they can pick it up, that how teachable seeing color and seeing how, what colors do in the relationship to each other, how that, how that can be taught and picked up on. So, uh, you know, we, we start out in, uh, Teaching art, we talk about the picture plane a lot, and how how do things uh, what determines how things relate in the picture plane, and that has to do with color saturation and different types of contrast. And in the process of learning how to mix paint and how to order things in the picture plane, it becomes like a whole new world for these kids. That's really exciting. Which brings us to another corollary with art science. If you you know people who do science at a very high level, and uh, several of my, my very closest friends teach at uh, Medical College of Wisconsin. And if you ask them what really determines success at a very high level in science or in, in clinical work, it's the ability to observe. Mm -hmm. So how you teach observation. It's not easy, <laughs> but there are certain, certain things that I, can, that I know how to do within teaching art that really enhance a person's ability to observe both outwardly and inwardly, and occasionally simultaneously. Can you give an example? Well, what's really, what really comes out uh, dramatically in beginning photographers, because if they, they get in a state of identification with what they're looking at, and they're all, they're all outward, emotionally involved with it, but they do not have the inner attention to realize what they have to do to the, with the camera to organ, you know, 
how they have to, you know, what they have to go through to organize the picture, how they have to manipulate the exposure. This is a really simple example of it. But having that arrow of attention uh, pointed at themselves, until they're able to do that to a certain extent, their pictures always fall way, way short of what, what they would like them to be. And of course, that, that, that whole relationship uh, goes much deeper eventually as well because we learn to observe ourselves while we, and nobody can do this for a very, very long time. It's very difficult, it requires a really high level of energy, but it's really, I think it's really interesting to uh, show students at, a high, at the high school level that, there's, uh, that they can observe the world outwardly and they can observe themselves inwardly at the same time, and that has a whole different, uh, adds a whole different dimension to their experience and what they're able to do.